In this video, I'd like us to take a step-by-step -step approach to know the reasons or the potential reasons why you're not getting hired on Upwork and also the potential solutions and rectifications that you can make so that you can turn your declines into hires. Welcome to this video. My name is David and I hope you're well wherever you're watching this video from around the world. Now, it is frustrating when you apply for work on Upwork and don't get hired. I know this because I've been there, but some few tweaks to your profile, to your cover letter, or just adjusting some few things here and there can make your declines into hires. So let's begin. And as you can see with this particular image on screen, these are 13 plus reasons why Upwork clients don't hire you plus solutions because there's no need of identifying a reason or a problem and not giving a potential solution. So I'll break this down into two categories, the common reasons why clients end up declining your job applications. And basically in this, you never get to the job interview. And one of the key things I always say, if you can get to a job interview, you know, you're almost there. It's just some few more tweaks and you start getting hired. The second category, uh, this is not very common, but sometimes it is where you get to the interview stage and clients don't hire you. So they like your job application, but in the end, they end up hiring somebody else. So that's the approach I'm going to take. Follow along. It's pretty simple. Just you apply and see what you can do on your own. So we look at the first category and the breakdown is simple. The problem to the left, the solution to the right. So I'll break down the possible reason or the problem or the why clients are not hiring you. And then I'll give a solution to improve and increase your chances of getting hired. Quick note here, this is not uh, a one size fits all. It's up to you to also look at what you can do to change, improve, and just start applying different things from what you've learned over the internet. So it's not that whatever I discuss here is the clear cut way to actually approach a particular reason or problem. So I believe you can just tweak everything on your own. Let's go and look at uh, one of these images. I always say Upwork is a long term game. Most people end up thinking that it's uh, you're going to just sign up on Upwork, apply, start getting jobs, etc. For some, it does happen, but for others, it does take some time. So please note that this is a marathon of sorts. You have to go step by step, get one job, get some good feedback, keep going, build your profile, build your reputation and clients will be hiring you, sending you job invites within no time. But you have to go through maybe the declines for you to learn some few things. So let's begin. Uh, and basically, the first category is where you're applying to potential job openings, jobs that you know that you can do, but you're not getting interviewed. All you keep getting is either a decline, no response from a client, or when you revisit a job, you realize the job was closed and somebody else was hired. So Let's look at number one. What's the problem? A poorly written proposal or application. Basically on Upwork for you to get hired, you have to see a job posting, write a proposal or a cover letter, and then send it for a client to read and see if you can do the job. Now, when you're new, because I was once there, you'd potentially do copy pasting of proposals and most clients will spot this out. So if you end up doing shoddy, canned or repetitive proposals, even not changing the actually the salutation, for example, hi, David, you're just using hi, David in every application and potentially the client is not called David. That is one problem that ends up happening. A client will read your proposal, realize, hey, this fellow did not even read the job posting and a proposal or a cover letter in our on Upwork is really the first communication with a potential client. So if they read your pro proposal or cover letter, they'll probably like it and hopefully go to your profile, see what you have done or see what you have as your portfolio and maybe now get that particular now contact or connection with you. What happens when you write your cover letter is that it shows your understanding of the job posting. So sometimes when you use recycled cover letters, 
sometimes they don't show specifics of the job. Some clients may say, hey, I'd like you to use a particular word. For example, I'd like you to write what's the color of the sky as the first thing that you write in your cover letter. If you don't read and just copy paste proposals, then you'll not have uh, or your client or the potential client will automatically decline you because you don't follow instructions. What are the solutions? Number one, your proposal or cover letter needs to show an understanding of the job posting and the requirements of the job posting. So if you see a job posting, write a cover letter, if possible, from scratch, or if you have a template for similar job postings, but make sure you amend them to fit that particular job posting. Number two, as for the solutions, take time and do research before applying. There's one thing I always say, and this is what people find quite difficult. Researching for potential job openings. It should be number one, even before ever applying for any job on Upwork. And then look at the frequency of the job posting. Number two, number two or number three, basically, you see what are the requirements? Can I do this? Can I recreate portfolio or sample items for these particular job postings? Those are the things you need to do. Next up, have relevant samples for the job posting. And most of the times, I always say, you don't need to write much in your proposal. You may just need to write a few words or just to show the client you do understand, show them maybe work you've done in the past with recent samples and all that. And basically, you may actually even be almost getting hired if your proposal has a relevant sample to the job posting. Now, if you can actually show them that you'll solve their problem and deliver what the client needs, then you'll actually tackle this problem or the reason why clients might decline you, which is of poorly written proposals, and you actually show your understanding and then show them you can deliver on what you promise. That's reason number one. Reason number two, your Upwork profile. And your Upwork profile, I'd like to say, uh, has two ways. It's a gateway to you for invites. It's also a gateway to you once a cover letter or once a client reads your cover letter. So what happens here is that when a client reads your, let's say, cover letter or proposal and all that, they may like it. But let's say they go to your profile. It's incomplete. It's not verified. So uh, they start wondering, OK, what is going on here? The skills listed are also not related to the job application. Because sometimes we as freelancers get desperate, especially when we're not getting work. We decide, hey, man, I see this job. I know how to do it. Let me just apply. And potentially your profile doesn't have the related skills to that particular job. It does happen. And some clients are really strict on that. Uh, so they'll look at your profile and realize, okay, the other potential candidates that I've hired with relevant skills on their profiles. So they'd rather hire that particular person. Also, having unrelated portfolio items, lack of job history, and feedback, etc. So, as I've mentioned, a client lands on your profile if they like your proposal. So, the easiest thing to do there or the solution is actually complete and verify your profile. It shows that, hey, this person, especially the verification, you have verified with a government ID. You are legit. You are not a con. You are not somebody who is out there to look for quick money and all that. Ensure that the skills listed relate to the jobs you apply to. That's one issue that you find and you potentially see somebody having skills that are or the skills listed and the jobs they apply to or for are two extreme ends. So that is a pure turn off for potential clients. You can also add relevant portfolio items. And for starters, in the in the beginning, you may not have portfolio items. But if you research potential job, job openings, you can always recreate portfolio items or samples that you can have on your profile so that clients can always come, especially clients that want to do direct invites to you. Now, another solution, especially for lack of job history and feedback, and we'll potentially look at this later on, you can find easy to do quick jobs that will give you job history and five star feedback fast. So this is one thing I always say. Sometimes getting a quick job history from short jobs that potentially are not off the budget you may want will show clients how you've related to other clients and then the type of feedback you always get. David delivered in exceptional time. David did XYZ. That's what you get. 
that's your app profile when a client sees it they see different things from the job application that you've put, uh, you've actually put out there reason number three lack of job history and feedback and it's just going over that crystal clear most times there's nothing you can do about this but the only solution i say find quick jobs that will give you job history find jobs that encourage newbies to apply especially if you're new even if it's a five dollar job at least it shows you have a job history and some clients always most of them actually use your hires or recent jobs to actually base other people's experience with you and this is more of like a referral system or a testimonial because they'll see client x even if they don't see the name left you feedback saying that you are good you communicate on time all those good things so a lack of job history and feedback can be a reason why a client doesn't hire you over another freelancer next up applying to jobs with too many applicants that's also another reason and a client will ignore if they found a freelancer for the job so there are times when you'll see a job posting getting applications super fast for example if it's if it's a simple job let's say a job on data entry transcription etc these jobs end up getting very many freelancers at a go so if you see that job an hour later it's potentially 20 to 50 applications in there is no need of applying for such a job posting unless it is something that you feel resonates with you but most of the times clients have already even started interviews at that point because those jobs have high competition to just put it plainly now the solution is do not apply to jobs with too many applicants or better yet just be among the first few people to apply research and timing is important to apply to jobs early and when you research you'll see the frequency especially if it's jobs that uh, let's say like data entry transcription you see that these jobs have a frequency these clients who say we, we need verbatim or verbatim transcripts or non verbatim etc you'll know hey i can deliver this i have samples i'll always be ready when this type of work appears you can also niche down based on the types of uh, jobs let's say somebody wants a podcast transcript etc so you'll always have those things ready those are some of the few solutions that can help you if you apply early to take out the, the competition that comes in now sometimes another solution is you can apply to jobs that client has not hired anyone and the client last viewed the job posting recently it doesn't work all the time but let's assume somebody is looking for somebody to do a swahili voiceover there are many people that will apply but let's assume they are looking for that unique voice for example your voice now change that swahili voiceover to whatever you think in your head might be a job that has applicants the client is still viewing those particular applications and do you think you can deliver and you think that you have the relevant qualifications and samples that particular client needs so that's how you can actually tackle applying to jobs with too many applicants but most of the time i just let it go i just don't apply to such jobs next up better freelance competition upwork is a global freelance marketplace where clients and freelancers from all over the world come to work and basically connect so somebody somewhere out there is better than you that's the truth the honest truth and nothing but the truth so with that in mind a client may decline hiring you because somebody else can do the job better than you what are the solutions if a freelancer beats you to a job revisit the job that is number one and find out who was hired you might be able to see that and you can actually check their profile by clicking on who was hired it may take some time to populate uh once somebody is hired but maybe a week or two you can always come back and see the job you applied and see who was hired now you may even be able to see how much was charged based on their freelancer membership next up what is their experience what is their job history those are some of the few things that will prepare you in case you have to deal with such a scenario in future number two create better samples maybe your competition just took you out because they had better samples than you did that is something i always say is just try and get into the mind of that particular person that actually won that particular job 
go to their profile, see the samples, etc. and all that. Thirdly, you need to diversify your skill set, e.g. if you offer one service, for example, transcription service. Let's assume there are many people that offer that particular service, transcription. Now, if you see a job posting that needs a transcriber or transcriptionist and a captioner or a subtitler or whatever, basically, if you have those skills, which are sister skills, then chances of you getting hired are higher as opposed to somebody that can only transcribe. So you diversify your skills into different things that are related, and that is horizontally and vertically. Uh, let's say captioning, WordPress posting, show notes writing, if it's things like podcast, graphic design for podcasts, those are episode graphics, etc. And that is how you solve the reason why a client declines you because of better freelance competition. Sometimes there's nothing you can do about it, you just let it go, but most of the times, Applying the few things by just looking at somebody's profile, trying to reverse engineer what they do, trying to better what they do can get you hired in future. Next up, freelancer or freelancers have been invited to a job application. Now, when a client wants to post a job on Upwork, there are a couple of things they might do. They might decide to look out for the freelancers that are available or with a particular skill set. So, what the client does is they go look for somebody, let's say, that can do, uh, let's say, programming in Python or has made applications in using a particular XYZ language. Then what happens? They'll go in there, look for these particular freelancers. They see their history. They see their profile and they say, let me send an invite to this particular fellow. I think he qualifies to actually work for me. I believe in Upwork actually refers or recommends some freelancers when a client is actually setting up a job posting. So sometimes you may actually apply to a job that has freelancers invited. And for some reason, sometimes it doesn't show up immediately how many freelancers have been invited. And then you're busy applying for that particular job posting. Chances are you will not get hired. And the solution to that is that sometimes there's nothing you can do about it. A client already knows what they want, the freelance talent they want, and there's nothing you can do. Secondly, there could be a solution in that the invited freelancers don't have the relevant things that resonate with our particular job posting, but you do. If you see the job posting early and you apply, chances are the client will look at you and hope and pray that the invited freelancers are not replying so that this client, if they were, they needed that thing done urgently, they'll look at your proposal and see, hey, David has the exact samples of what I need. Let me just hire this fellow. So it's, it's just like that. Sometimes freelancers are invited all the time. I get invites all the time. And freelancers may also be invited and decline the invitation because they're busy. So you can always apply. And if you have relevant samples, you may get hired. If you actually show the client you do understand and you can deliver on what they need, then you can get hired. But always remember that is one reason why you may not get hired. Next up, clients don't just post jobs on Upwork. This is the truth, especially when we are dealing with rush jobs. There are other freelancing websites out there, Fiverr, Guru, People Per Hour, or basically somebody might get in-house help or even a relative. I've actually had one of my clients uh, send me a job over the weekend and I was not available. It was a video editing project and the client told me, hey, I need you to do this ASAP. I was not available. Come uh, the next day, I saw the message replying. They told me, hey, David, I got this help from my nephew. So there's nothing you can do about that because clients don't only hire on Upwork. Sometimes they hire on other platforms like Fiverr, Guru, People Up Hour. Or wherever they are, they may get somebody locally, somebody in-house, or even from a relative. The solution, nothing you can do about this. Maybe the one other solution is sign up on other freelancing websites. And yes, this is one thing I always say. Your success on Upwork and as your success on other uh, web freelancing website may be different. I have a friend who's been very successful on Fiverr. He's actually Fiverr's choice for particular skill set he has. Now, on Upwork, it's the other way around. He's tried, he's failed. Luckily, he got a breakthrough, but it's been cold for almost a year now. So he always, uh, we always say this, 
don't put your eggs in one basket so be on fiverr set up gigs on fiverr be on guru people power etc so that you diversify your freelance websites but please remember you can get burnout especially if you get many clients and all that so next up a client losing interest in the job posting this is potentially true and it's a reason a client may put a, put out a job posting but in due course they lose out interest or maybe they go or suffer an accident and they may pass on etc these are things that happen and there's nothing we can do about it so you'll just see after a while maybe upwork just closes out a particular job application because nobody was hired or even the time span for example we are going into halloween a client put out a job posting related to halloween got nobody or not go, did not get the right skill set to do that particular job and they just end up closing out that particular job posting because its relevance has not been achieved or has passed so there's nothing you can do about that you just hope and pray that if you apply you'll get the job and the client will not lose interest now if we can just do a quick recap for the few common reasons uh of this and uh, basically we'll just work on the solutions is that ensure that you have a complete and verified profile this will potentially get you invites if it's complete with the relevant skills also if a client likes your job proposal or application they'll potentially come and see your profile see your verified see your rate if you've had recent jobs that you've worked on feedback etc they'll be able to view that Next up, research potential job openings. Researching potential job openings will help you create relevant samples, will help you learn new and changing things in whatever field you're in. So, for example, if it's transcription, automatic transcription has really kicked off. Nowadays, what you see is clients posting jobs and saying, "We have automatic transcripts. We need to collaborate with you inside our application." so that you can just make the edits from the automatic automatically prepared transcript you have to learn on upwork you have to do your research from the potential job openings and see what you can actually do number 3 write better proposals or job applications don't just copy paste proposals here and there just write them from scratch echoing what the client needs showing them that you can do it communicating effectively etc researching your competition just like researching a job posting is important your competition might be eating your lunch so it doesn't feel good when you're on the same platform you have the skill but somebody else is eating your in this quote money or lunch so research see what they're doing better than you can you better what they be- they're doing better than you can you diversify what they're doing can you do a, a, an about turn if something is actually in a competitive area it's basically just flip flopping in between all those things and seeing the sweet spot of where you can offer a package to clients so that you can actually start getting hired next up for the recap you can diversify your skill set and we're going on to the category number 2 but diversification of your skill set horizontally and vertically is one thing that i can say is important Now, if you're a transcriber or transcriptionist, diversify into captioning, diversify into things like WordPress administration, show notes writing, blog post writing, translation if applicable because you don't know when this particular industry will change. Automatic transcription is getting better and better every day. Clients are actually now just pushing out their content through AI powered transcription tools. and then they just say i need you to just make minor corrections you'll make less money through that but if you actually learn and diversify your skill set into different things you can actually be able to handle that particular change in 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 this particular industry so freelancing requires you to be on your toes all the time now we go to category number 2 and there's a guy holding his chin and all that you get to in the interview stage but you're not getting hired It happens. It's not very common, but it does happen. So, what are the reasons that can make clients or potential clients not hire you at this stage? They are there, and the problem is better competition. 
better competition now crosses into both uh, categories. So a potential client ends up interviewing a bunch of freelancers and picks up the best. So you and other freelancers have been selected for the interview, but as much as we know, interviews end up having the candidate that will suit the need of a particular organization, client, etc. When they, there's better competition, sometimes there's nothing you can do about it because you applied, you got the interview, it's up to the client to hire. There's nothing you can do about it. But what I always say is if this happens to you and it has happened to me, research your competition and be better than them. Offer diversified services, better rates, have better samples, ATC. Communicate fast. Now, this one will will be subject to time zone differences and all that. You can always indicate availability in your proposal. And the reason why I'm saying communicate fast is that if you are interviewing like two or three people, then if a client is usually a busy client and they only have scheduled that time to conduct interviews and get the person they need for the job, then the person that replies shows they can do the job uh, and basically the client feels that this is the person they need to hire is the person that is going to get that particular job. So if there is better competition and that is the reason why you're not getting hired, go research your competition. Find out why they are better than you and how you can be better than them. Communicate fast, ETC. So when you're interviewing, a client may ask you, do you have relevant samples? And maybe the reason why they're interviewing you is because you wrote an exceptional job proposal or cover letter. The samples, as I've mentioned, can easily tell a client and it's relevant samples for that matter, not just any sample. This tells the client that David can do this job. David actually has a replica of what I need. I'll actually hire him. If you lack the relevant samples and somebody else has in that particular interview, that person will get hired and you will not. So the solution is you research potential job openings. Do not apply fast. Create relevant samples to use when applying for future job postings. This really helps. Or another solution in here is that you can tell the client, hey, I can actually do an unpaid. In quotes, remember, it's up to you. It's just a solution I'm trying to put out there. An unpaid test or sample, you assess the quality if this is what you're looking for. It's very important. But let me tell you, if you lack the relevant samples and you're interviewing with other freelancers that have relevant samples, you'll not get hired. But if you take time to research potential job openings, create relevant samples, chances are even those fellows that have better samples or samples that relate may not have better samples than you because you've already researched potential job openings and you know the frequency of the jobs that you want to apply to and what is required. Next up, too many contracts that are inactive. And this is a scenario, especially if you've been on Upwork for a while, you've been hired in the past, most clients hire, and once a job is done, they forget to close it out. I am a victim of this. At one point, I had almost 40 job applications, or not applications, actually contracts, that are inactive. Now, if a client views your profile, let's say you applied for a job, or they want to invite you to an interview, and they view your profile. They'll see a ton of jobs that are show like they're active, but to you on your end, you know they're inactive. Now, a client wants a freelancer that will dedicate their time to their project. If they see this, they'll be skeptical and assume that you're extra busy. So closing out, or we go to the solution, is that closing out inactive contracts is one of the key things that you can do. And you can always reach out to the client that hired you and request them to end the contract and leave you feedback if you're not working on this project again. Sam will actually do it gladly. Uh, basically, uh, Sam will say we'll be hiring you and you can always put a, a line somewhere there that if you don't reply in next time, I'll end the contract on my end and mark the job as successfully ended ATC. There is no need to have an inactive contract on your profile especially if the contracts are more than six months. This is just clogging your profile for no reason whatsoever. And having too many contracts that are inactive can actually make clients 
potential clients not hire you. Next up, paid and unpaid tests. And the reason why I'm putting this out there is that some clients may say, I'll pay for a test to see if you can actually do what you say in your proposal and also what your profile and your samples say. Now, I always say that not everyone is willing to do paid or unpaid test. A client will decline you if you don't want to do that. Also, I always say it depends on how long it takes to do the test. You may feel that this particular job will take you long, a long time to actually do that particular sample or the test. And then you tell the client that they decline you. Some clients use this to sieve through a bunch of freelancers. Now, it's usually a tactic in quotes to see who will deliver the closest results to what they need. So the solution is that if you don't mind doing a test, paid or unpaid, do it. You may end up being the best freelancer from that particular pool. Also, and this is quite a note, ensure that an unpaid test doesn't feel like a job. Some clients are looking for free work. That's true. It's a freelance platform. And sometimes you end up finding people that just want to use you. So always ensure that if it is an unpaid job, for example, if you are writing an article and you tell the client you can do an unpaid of about 100 words or let's say 200 words. And then the client says, no, I'd like you to do a 1500 word article. Do the research, keyword research and all that. That's a job. Don't do it if it's not paid. There's no need. So when you're given a test, do your best. Because most of the times, if you do the test well, communicate effectively, over deliver, under promise, you'll get hired and turn your declines into hires. Next up, a client losing interest. And this is the same for the common category where you never get to the interview. A client may lose interest once they accept your job application and you're, inter and you're in the interview stage, or they may get an accident, they may pass on ATC, and there's nothing you can do about it. So don't beat yourself up because it ended up being a closed job, a decline ATC. Now, another problem is unrealistic client requirements. So you're in the interview stage. A client may tell you, hey, you may need to sign an NDA for this particular thing. A client may also say, you, I'll want you to do X, Y, Z thing that is illegal to you. You're in the interview stage. You end up losing out of this particular opportunity of being hired because of unrealistic client requirements or terms that you do not want to actually have uh, to do up, uh, to, to end up signing like NDAs if you don't want to. But you can get declined in the interview stage because of this. Sometimes the solution is there's nothing you can do about it. Maybe you just sign. If the requirements are unrealistic to potentially the job posting, there's nothing you can do about it. Just let it slide. So as we continue, I hope that you're learning something. And the next steps as we wrap up this video is that if you want to turn your declines into hires, if you're not getting hired on Upwork, a few things that you can do that can start changing your declines into hires and get you hired for potential jobs that you apply to is update your Upwork profile with relevant skills, portfolio, and consistently update your portfolio based on what you have learned along the way, new skills you've acquired, ATC. Number two, write better proposals and job applications. Don't just copy paste proposals, ATC. That will always get you out of the way. Three, research potential job openings and create relevant samples. Very important, something that you need to do all the time. If you can, especially if you're new, if you don't have a job history, if you don't have feedback from potential or from previous clients, then relevant samples will get you hired. Next up, research your competition. Freelancers need to research each other because we cannot fail to agree that there's somebody who is better than you. You need to know what you can be better at better than what they do. What are they doing? Are they offering a single service? Is there a service that you can actually, and to the next point, diversify your skills horizontally and vertically so that if the job requires somebody that can do two or three things, then you're that person. So that comes at, uh, to the end of this particular video. 
on the reasons why you're not getting hired on Upwork and the potential solutions that can turn your declines into hires. I hope this video has been informative and that you're going to apply what you have learned and it's not one size fits all. Just know that you can tweak everything you've learned from this particular video to your liking so that you can start turning your declines into hires. Thanks for watching this video. My name is David. Until next time, stay safe and never stop learning. Thanks for watching.